right, this went live. Good morning, good morning. What's up, YouTube? Can y'all hear me? Throw a um, thumbs up in the comment section if you guys can hear me. I am preparing my GoPro camera for the point of view angle. So y'all should see my client right now. How y'all doing this morning? Checking in with us. Thanks for waking up. Starting your morning off, your Saturday morning off with us. Do I have my other point of view mouse? I do. Okay, cool. Got the fire emoji. All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, y'all, so like I said, I'm just finishing my setup. Just make sure we don't have to interrupt this live stream. But yeah, I appreciate y'all coming in. Tune in with us this morning. We're about to get it popping. But I'm gonna be breaking down how I do this, uh, this ball fade here, so. Again, y'all, give me a thumbs up just to make sure that y'all can hear me on your end. Wanna make sure the audio is coming through clearly, cleanly. If you're in the uh, live right now, just in the uh, comment section, just drop a thumbs up for me. A little bit of a delay, but it should be no more than maybe 30 seconds, so. All right, got wavy cuts already dropped in the comment. What you talking about, brother? What you talking about? Let's see. All right, cool, got a thumbs up. All right, so audio is good. All right, cool. We're ready to go. Let's rock and roll. So good morning, family. This is our, what, our fourth, fifth live stream now? So we're starting to get into a nice little rhythm now. Trying to constantly improve every time, y'all, so... Appreciate y'all working with us, and um, you know it's Virgo season, and I'm definitely showing my Virgo chops right now by being a perfectionist. Um, but yeah, first and foremost, I want to say good morning to everybody, and uh, I want to say thank you to my client Kevin here for waking up early and um, coming to get this fresh cut early on a Saturday morning in the rain because it's raining right now, and it's and no, that's not the Instagram. It's raining right now in Atlanta. So it wasn't an easy trek to get here, but we are here. We starting off ready. So let's do it. So let's get a little closer with this one. And I'm gonna bring the ISO down a little more. Cool. All right, so let's take off these, the countdown and it's starting soon. Um, and then again with the tracks, click on any of them and just hit repeat. Just keep it going. Keep these vibes going. So all right, so this is a um, a drop ball fade, y'all. So I'm I'm gonna be doing the same haircut that I always do on Kevin. He appreciates consistency, so that's what I'm gonna keep delivering. Um, it is a drop ball fade, and we how often do we cut your hair, Kevin? Every three to four weeks. Every three to four weeks. Yeah, so we um, we cut it down low enough to give him enough time for it to go back and for it to still look clean. So my focus uh, while I'm cutting his hair is on that. It's on giving him enough of a detailed cut that as it grows out, it still looks good. Right, so I'll be focusing on that as I walk through the tutorial, showing you what I like to look for when it comes to hair regrowth, because that's a big part of the actual cut is thinking about what the regrowth is gonna look like. All right, so. I got my tools. Let me mount my GoPro. Hey Meg, is there a rubber band on my station where my um, N95 mask is? Oh my 
around that light. Oops, yeah, oops, give me that. I'm gonna um, use it to make sure this GoPro don't pop off. Appreciate it. All right, so y'all, you are live with me. So if you have any questions, we gonna treat this like a, a consultation. You can ask whatever. I mean, of course, let's try to keep it relevant to the to the haircut, but you know, ask away. I'm gonna answer as best as I can, and we're going to um, get this thing started. All right. All right. So let's switch to the point of view, Megan. Let's test to see how it looks. Clean. All right, cool. <clears throat> so let's walk through my normal um, haircut phases. All right, so we're gonna put that up on the screen, y'all. These are the things that I keep in mind with every single client. Um, no matter the hair type, no matter the texture, no matter the last time I saw them, these are the three general topics that I like to keep in mind and make sure that I address. Um, first being consult, right? So the first thing I'm doing is I'm thinking about the consultation. I'm considering what his needs are. And before we even got on camera just now, um, Kevin and I just had a conversation just making sure that we're on the same page about what he wants. And like I said, he appreciates consistency, so that's what I'm gonna deliver. So this drop ball fade, we're going to do a mid to low drop ball fade. What I mean by mid to low is my ball line will be sitting about right here. Uh, if it was a mid drop ball fade, I would bring it up to pretty much the bottom of this uh, this side bar. I forget what the technical term of this side is right here, but whatever this bar is right here, this bottom peak point, that is where I would put a mid drop ball fade. And what makes it a drop ball fade is that it actually dips down beneath the occipital bone um, with the mid drop ball fade. So I'm gonna put this line down here, chop it below the occipital. But even if it was a high drop ball fade, you still wanna drop it down. It may not dip down as low, way down there. That's more of a mohawk feel. Um, but it, you can really design a haircut however you want. I don't like to necessarily stick to the rules of what is supposed to be a tent fade, right? What's supposed to be a mid tent fade, how that's supposed to look. It's really about what your client wants. I mean, we can get caught up in the language, but at the end of the day, even if he calls it a, a pickup fade, right? If, if I give him exactly what he asked for, at the end of the day, that's what matters most, okay? So his hair is a little grown out. Um, I like to keep his line, well, we like to keep his line natural. So I'm going to frame his hairline. That's one of the steps as well. Um, consult, what's the second phase? I got that fast, Ass assess. So consult, assess, and then um, frame. So assess, meaning I'm combing through it. I'm seeing if there's any issues. Um, maybe somebody, maybe he has dandruff I need to be concerned with, or I don't know, maybe somehow he has a, a lump on the side of his head from playing ball and somebody hit him with an elbow, right? So I'm assessing, I'm walk, I'm combing through, making sure everything's cool. And last is frame. Now what I mean by frame is, because I'm keeping his hairline natural, I'm gonna go ahead and set my frame first. I'm gonna put my framework for my my masterpiece, right? I'm, the haircut is the main focus, but the hairline is what frames and positions the haircut for somebody's eye to be drawn to it. So because we're keeping it natural, I have to make sure my frame is in the center of my mind, top of mind, and that I'm thinking about making sure it's balanced, making sure it's natural. So I'm gonna take down some bulk first and then we're gonna frame it, cool? And we added some music this time, y'all. I hope y'all appreciate these, uh, these tracks that I put in here. You know, these are all produced by me. I took the time last night to, you know, go into GarageBand and drop some beats, put some beats together. Now that's a whole lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a lot. Oh, that, was... <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a full blown fib. Yeah, I just this is um this service called Epidemic Sound. So if you're ever looking for music for your YouTube, uh, that's a good resource. It's a platform that you can use to download copyright free music. And it's important that it's copyright free because if it's not, then YouTube can take it down or whoever made the track can be like, you know what? I don't want you to use it no more. So I downloaded a few copyright free tracks. And um, I'm gonna use it as background music. So 
Again, give us some feedback in the comment section, y'all. Let me know how you hear me. Um, I need y'all feedback. I need the feedback so I can continue to make this production better and better. So if the music is a little too loud or if you like the music, you want to hear some more of it, you know, you want me to shut up for a second so you can vibe out with the music, let me know. Drop it in the comments. I need some feedback. So um, Meg just told me that there's a lag with the video for my GoPro. So if that's the case, if I'm pointing to his hairline and talking about his hairline right now, maybe the audio isn't synced up. So is the audio ahead of me pointing? So if I say ear, <laughs> ear, is that lined up or is it behind? Y'all gotta let me know in the comments. We can't tell on our end. I'm holding up number one, two, three, let me know if the audio aligns with my fingers. So what happens when you go live, man, you know? Got a problem solved, on the go. The video quality is still really good. Cool. All right, so yeah, this is me assessing, getting through his hair, seeing what's going on, everything's normal. Um, so we usually take his top down to about a one and a half against the grain as the top. So we keep it dark, but still really, really low. We want to give him some longevity. So let's go ahead and do that now. Going against the grain now, y'all. Audio's lined up. Okay, good. Cool, so this should be a pretty good experience for y'all, man. Last few weeks we've been trying my phone as a point of view camera and um, even though the quality is really really good with the video it's just a lot to do and we had a hard time figuring out workarounds and having that actual record button showing so my GoPro Hero 7 is coming through in the clutch. Crazy story, well quick story about my GoPro y'all I've been looking for solutions with point of view cameras and um, Meg likes to call me a nerd, but you know, identify as a techie, I guess is a better word, I don't know. It's cool actually being considered a nerd because I was no better than a B minus student in school, <laughs> college dropout. So being called a nerd now is actually a, a badge of honor I'm gonna wear proudly. But um, yeah, I've been looking for different kind of GoPro style cameras, even though I already had a GoPro, right? So keep that in mind. I've been looking for different point of view cameras to make this type of production come to life. Um, I've always had this vision of doing something like this virtually, so you wouldn't necessarily have to be in the shot with me to get a really good perspective of how I like to do things. So I found this Ordro camera online, did some research, the reviews were good, but when I got it, the quality wasn't as good as my Sony over here or as good as my iPhone. So from that perspective, I was a little disappointed. But um, I tried to sell my GoPro. It's like literally as soon as I got that second camera, I was like, all right, bet. I don't need my GoPro no more. Try to sell it. So I went to um, Facebook Marketplace. Y'all ever use Facebook Marketplace to try to sell something? You ever use Facebook Marketplace, bro? Never. Me neither. So I was figuring, you know, let me just sell it real quick. I, I never used it. I heard somebody, actually Newland, another barber in our shop, used it before. And he bought a uh, Apple Watch from it. And that is my GoPro telling me that we need a new battery. Is the, is the video still up? Nope. Okay, cool. So switch to the um, Sony. Say that again, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Good. You can't see it all, is that the thing? It's just darker. So you can turn up the brightness on the, um, when that camera setting, the one that I use to zoom in and zoom out, you can increase the brightness. If it is dark, 
that shit help out? All right, but for now, are you just on the Sony? Cool. So bring the Sony up and um, we'll just continue with that for now. Um, so yeah, story about trying to buy this point of view camera. So long story short, um, I didn't sell my GoPro, which is a good thing, because obviously I'm trying to use it now. But um, I was on Facebook Marketplace and people were giving me offers and kind of giving me more than what I was asking for. And they, some people didn't want to pay using um, PayPal, so then you know the red flag started started coming up in my mind. But it's a good thing that I didn't sell this camera because now I should be using it for this live stream. We're gonna figure out how to make these batteries work. It should be charging. When I tried it out last night, it was charging while I was shooting. But anyway. All right, so we went one with the grain with a one, against the grain with a one and a half. And now I'm going with the grain with my one. In the comment section, let me know how is this Sony looking? Are we good? So looking good, making it perspective. Okay. So I still have my phone as a backup. Um, if you look in my backpack, there should be some extra batteries for the GoPro. So let's set down the camera and see if we can find the, the extra batteries to switch out. Maybe I just do. As a matter of fact, I don't think it's the battery. I think it's just cell time out and turned off, not thinking that we're recording. Did it pop back up on the screen? Still black. All right, so we do have backup GoPro batteries, but I don't think the battery is an issue. Give me one second, Kara. All right, so just on the fly, click on that. And that is my office, upside down. All right, get off of that screen for me. To preview mode. <laughs> What's up, y'all? <laughs> All right, so let's do preview mode. So I have to zoom back out. So that's what I was looking for. So uh, did you turn up the brightness on the GoPro? Do you know how to? All right, so we're dealing with some technical difficulties, but we're still here. What camera are you on, Meg? And uh, how's the brightness look? Cool. Um, but is it good enough to shoot? Can we keep this angle? 
All right, cool. All right, y'all. So now I'm putting the frame on the hairline, and thanks for bearing us, bearing with us through these technical difficulties. But um, Kevin likes to keep his hairline natural, so as it grows back in, there's not a whole bunch of grow back. So I'm lining him up first, just so I know where his natural line is. I don't have to search for it on the back end. So that's what we're doing now, creating this arch. But as you can see here, I um keeping this as far out as I can. I'm doing this early on before I do all the fading allows me to know exactly where I need to put this hairline. Keeping this corner natural. And same thing on this side, so let me take that hair down so All right, any new comments talking about the uh, the brightness, which I'll think about it right now. We're missing one of our lights, so that's why it may seem a little darker than usual, but we're gonna try to compensate. I didn't hear you. Cool. All right, so we back up live, finishing up this broadcast. I'm going with the grain now. So I like to go against the grain first. Um, just through my experience, y'all cutting hair, against the grain gives me the cleanest canvas, right? Clean canvas, clean canvas. That's what I'm thinking about. If I have a clean canvas, I can do my best work. Going with the grain um, is best suited for people who have really deep waves and who, have do a, who do a lot of training with their waves. But for me, that's not a large percentage of my clientele. I actually had a client last week who had really deep waves. Actually, no, it was early this week. It was like Tuesday this week. who had really deep waves. And I assumed that he was a waver, that he was wolfing, but that wasn't the case. He just naturally had deep waves. In that case, I went with the grain first. But 95% of the time, I will go against the grain to make sure my canvas is smooth and that the hair is even as possible. Clean fades, clean haircuts. I mean, you have to start with the hair being even all around. So now I'm going over his crown area. And I like to be careful when I'm going in around the crown. Can you take your head up for me, bro? So this top of the head, there's always some swirls. Most people, pretty much everybody has a swirl at the top of their head. I like to think of it like a hurricane almost. So you have to be careful if you're going with the grain to follow that flow of that hair and go completely with it. Yeah. Is there still music playing in the background? I did it stop? All right, so I took the top down. Let me put this frame on. Let's take it this way. This might be a little better lighting for that. And here I'm looking for the point, the point of uh, density. So when I like to do the arch, one number one thing is symmetry. So I like to make sure it's matched the other side. But I'm also looking for the point in which it gets most dense. All right, so let's start there. Okay, cool. So now I'm making sure that these temple peak points match up. Again, I'm checking for symmetry, seeing how these points line up. Pretty good. All right, now we can go into my fading. So if you have any questions about drop ball fades, drop them in the comments now. 
have my frame put on now so I'm good to go with this hairline I know where that's at I don't have to worry about finding that on the back end we can get into the fading now so I have my one guard I'm all the way closed Trying to keep lighting in mind, y'all. I think next time I just get my head set. My headlight. Maybe since I'm a nerd now, let's try to get this headlight on. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the question is, is a four, can you put it on the screen too? Is it already up there? The question is, is a four against the grain equivalent to a two with the grain? Um, let me see, let me break that down visually. Is a four. All right, so is a four guard against the grain equivalent to a two guard with the grain? Um. That's a tough one. That's a great question, but a tough one because it's 100% dependent. And we can bring out the camera so I can talk to the camera with this one too. Um, we're going to switch views so I can answer this question directly. Um, the question in the comments is, if I'm reading it, if I'm deciding it correctly, is a four guard against the grain equivalent to a two guard with the grain? You're going to have to play around. You're going to have to figure that out for yourself because it depends on the client. It depends on the hair texture. It depends on the density, right? So... For me, I like to always go about a guard, about a guard higher and um, flip sideways so you can um, do portrait mode. So I know it's on YouTube, y'all, but we're going to keep it together. I always like to go about a guard and a half higher um, if I'm going against the grain. So say somebody usually gets a, a one and a half with the grain, then I'll go with a three guard open to be safe, but I'll go with a three guard against the grain so you always want to give yourself a little extra room to uh to make sure that you have that you don't have too much hair taken off so that's a good start i'll say if you have a two guard that you usually go with the grain skipping an entire guard is fine but usually just one guard higher will keep you in um, a safe zone so i hope that makes sense y'all in this case um if i wanted to go with the grain with kev and i'll switch back to the point of view if I wanted to go with the grain with Kev, um, I can use my zero guard and pretty much get the same type of look, but against the grain one and a half. So in that case, I skipped about, I skipped the entire one guard. So yeah, it, it's safe. But again, man, that's case by case. You have to explore, explore with your clients. Each client, you'll get different results. You can't have a set guard structure with every client because everybody's a little different. So I think that's a good place to start is jumping the entire guard and going up from a two to a four just to be safe. But that may be that may that may not be enough hair off. Right. Sometimes that may you may be just spinning your wheels and taking way too much time. You might need to just go from a two to a three. So it really depends. It's case by case. In his case, if I go with a zero with the grain um, against the grain is a one and a half. But that's based on his density. So case by case is the answer. Um, density is the answer and explore make sure you always explore and experiment with your different guards experiment with your different clippers so you know what works best for your clippers you know what works best for the hair texture all right a great question though for sure yeah i don't like to stick to the rules too much when it comes to guards um it, that gets you in trouble and sometimes a client will come in the chair and ask for a one and a half um but they may not yeah 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 they they may ask for one and a half but they really wanted a zero um or maybe their last barber used a one and a half detachable which will give you a different feel than a one and a half using my calibers um maybe his hair was wolfing at that point so that one and a half with the grain worked perfectly but he's coming into you with his hair already cut down so that one and a half wouldn't do as much so you see what i'm saying there's way too many factors involved to have a a set standard of how you're going to treat guards every single time you just have to be paying enough attention to see what's going on and to to give yourself room for error 
skipping that guard going from a two to a four is a good way to give yourself room for error but you have to experiment quickly you have to fail fast just like this just like this live stream right now right i mean my gopro will probably do it again but it shut off on me so i had backup plans but i failed fast right we make a mistake we jump onto the backup plan we learn from that so i know next time i got to change the setting in my gopro to make sure it doesn't turn off on me so <laughs> whatever you're doing cutting hair studying for you know, your dissertation whatever it is y'all make sure you fail fast and um experience is the best teacher man so with your guards get a lot of experience with that four guard get a lot of experience with the two guard with your client and experiment fail fast so kev man um again appreciate you showing up early um you mind sharing a little bit about yourself man and how long you been coming to me man how long has it really been when did i start cutting you uh it's been a while it's been probably it's been about three and a half four years yes sir man time flying <laughs> that's for sure Three and a half, four years. So, how did you discover me, man? Like, um, do you remember? Yeah, I remember. I'd gone to like several other. There's a lot of good barbers in Atlanta. And I was looking for somebody that could like really just fade, like, fade really well. Okay. Not like a simple haircut. Oh, got you. Something like that. Okay. Do you remember what particular haircut you saw when you were doing such a hashtag on my page? Do you remember that? I could probably find it way down there, but I saw a haircut <laughs> I liked, and I said, yep, yeah, you can do the exact what I'm looking for. I remember, I think I remember the haircut that you brought in, the first one you showed me. Um, I don't know if that was one of yours or a previous. Was it a drop ball fade, just like this? On a dark skin guy? Most likely, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I, I do remember that haircut. I remember that moment. And that's crazy. So my wife, I think she might be on the stream right now. She'll tell you that I have a really selective memory. But moments about haircuts, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they come right back. So I'm more likely to remember your haircut before I remember somebody's name. Mm -hmm. But yeah, bro, that haircut was a drop ball fade. Same cut we're doing now. And um, you, you kept it real simple. You like, listen, I want this. I don't want to push my hairline back. Um, I don't know if you said in those exact words, but... I probably do. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that that moment of telling you, man. All right, cool. Outside of the the quality of the haircut, is anything else that is a big factor for you? Um, yeah, you know, I like um, so online scheduling is cool. Uh, scheduling in general, right? Like, so not not walking in. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to get it scheduled, you know, they're like, sometimes folks get behind you with traffic and stuff, but get it scheduled, you get cut, right? All right, so let me ask you a question, put you on the spot real quick. Yeah. All things, everything else being equal, if the haircut was still dope, still consistent, but I didn't do appointments, and you had to walk in, you had to potentially wait, would you still be coming here? Would you still, would I still be your barber? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. It just uh, depends. I have to like change my schedule to say like, you know, maybe Saturday early morning, something like that. You open on Saturday. And you could be the first one in the chair yeah, type vibe. Yeah, I like Yeah. It's a good haircut though. <laughs> Appreciate you. No, I asked that question for the audience out there, people who are still on the live stream. Um, appreciate your honesty with that too, bro. That I just wanted people to understand the fact that there is a kind of like an algorithm when it comes to satisfying your client's needs, right? And of course, you have to be able to do a dope fade. You have to be able to execute on a haircut. But there's other factors that are involved and you can't ignore those things just for the sake of delivering an absolutely flawless haircut, right? I put air quotes on flawless because 
really that's all in your mind right you're, you're trying your best to execute on this haircut that for you is perfect but at the end of the day if kevin came for a nine o'clock appointment on a saturday morning and i installed on him till 9 40 ish and then i took another hour because i was trying to perfect his haircut it might be a dope haircut but I, maybe he just wasted you know half a saturday maybe he had plans with his family so just keep that in mind y'all like you have to be a balanced well-balanced professional and that's when you got to get out of the mindset of perfection and get more into the mindset of delivering a, a product and a service that suits the needs of your clients so that's why the first thing in the haircut phases that i talk about is the consultation can you put that up one more time too Meg? it's not it's already up there okay cool yeah so the first thing i like to make sure i get through is communication i like to make sure we have a full conversation about what's most important um for Kev, it was a drop ball fade. So of course, quality is most important for him. He's not gonna just come to me because I'm punctured and I'm giving him a shitty haircut. But at the end of the day, he got a schedule he gotta stick to. So I got a schedule, a schedule I have to stick to. Um, you can take down all the haircut phases. All right, so. Going with my zero open, I have my ball guideline, I have my weight guideline. I'm using my zero open to try to knock out this line. Only on point of view now. Using my zero open to knock out this weight line. Then I'm gonna go down and knock out my ball line last. My hair line is already set, so I'm gonna clean that up at the end. But it's not a lot of work left to do with that, so. I'm good. Any questions in the comments? So let's uh, there's no questions right now, y'all. I'm just gonna vibe out a little bit while I knock out this weight line. Step to the side, see if I can get some, some better lighting for y'all from on this side. Working through my bulk line right now, my weight line with my zero open. Yeah, you good on time? Yeah. Okay, cool. Meg, do me a favor and um, hand me my iPhone, please. This is um, live stream, y'all. So I got to text my next client. Let it know me. About five, ten minutes behind. So yeah, I'm doing live right now, y'all, on my Saturday that I actually work. So some I work half, every other Saturday. Um, so my first client is at eight a.m. But I'm gonna start doing these. I'm gonna start doing these tutorials probably earlier in the week just to get off my Saturday schedule. Meg over here shaking her head like that's what we should do. Can you text Des Moines and then um, the next guy Daryl and let them know I'm running 10 minutes behind? So yeah, we'll get off of it as I get a little more um, thorough and um, clean with this production. But um, the reason why I initially wanted to do it Saturday, um, well, one of the reasons why is uh, A, I'm already up. So, you know, I'm usually already functioning this early in the morning. So it works with my schedule. Um, but B, I just wanted to give y'all the most authentic, transparent version of how things go in the shop. You know what I mean, there, there are plenty of YouTube channels. You know, are you still a point of view right now? There are plenty of YouTube channels who do tutorials i mean the fact that i'm doing a haircut on youtube is not a new thing but i wanted to really focus on what i do well and what i do naturally right and 
I've always been a creature of of habit number one and timing has always been something that's been important for me so I wanted to show y'all with my haircuts and my schedule how that plays a big part into my um, my value I believe in what I bring to the marketplace like Kevin said man there's a lot of dope barbers here in Atlanta I know probably at the top of my head I can probably direct run through about 50 just off the top of my head who I know are really really dope and some of them who aren't even on social media I know a few barbers who are making six figures who are killing it that don't use social media at all so these are more old school it's crazy how now if you don't have YouTube or Instagram you're old school but it is what it is <laughs> these are more old school barbers who um, have booked clientele and don't necessarily need social media so they don't use it at all but I'm just saying that uh, I say all that to say I wanted to give y'all an experience that was true to how I usually go through my day and um, having an hour and a half, having two hours blocked off for a full haircut for a YouTube tutorial is, isn't necessarily something that I, that's normal for me right now. Um, I think I'll get to that point where I have a whole day where I shoot content just for YouTube, but we ain't there yet. We ain't there yet, so I'm going to give it to y'all raw. And um, the broadcast is going to end sometimes <laughs> so we get that figured out all the way. But yep. Do you always use the taper cone first and first because it works the same for a cone? So why the taper cone over the taper cone? Yeah, I feel like the taper another great question. Um and I'm just gonna repeat it out. Did you put it on the screen? Okay, cool. Um So the question now and uh hold on one second, y'all. So the question that just popped up on YouTube was asking about comb versus brush. And do I always use a taper comb instead of a brush when I'm fading or when I'm doing haircuts? The answer is an emphatic yes. I'm, I'm a heavy proponent of a comb over a brush uh, for a few different reasons. One is no matter how, I think with the comb is more universal, right? So I have a set of about 20 combs that I cycle through throughout the day. Um, I'm able to just keep those clean and just rotate those those combs with every client. And no matter what texture it is, or no matter how dense or thick the hair is, a comb is gonna work. A brush is only limited to a certain type of hair texture. I mean, even hair length as well. Even Kevin, when he first came in, he had curls on top, his hair was that long. So a brush wouldn't work in that case. My comb does, you know? And my comb is more versatile because I have the what call it, small end, I guess, small end and then this other, a wider end. So when I first started, I was combing through it with the wide end. Now that I'm fading, I'm combing through it with the, the thin end, if you will. So it's, it's more versatile to me. It's, um, it's a tool that I can use on all different textures. And also I can use it with my fading technique. So a brush is the only purpose for a hair, for a brush while you're fading hair is to brush hair away. It can't serve any purpose with helping you with your fading. My comb does. So it's a tool and I use it as like a guard as well. Um, my brush, I can't use that as a guard, but my comb, I can pick up this hair and I can do clipper over comb, right? When I'm combing through the hair, I'm actually combing the hair out of that fade section as well. So it, it has the same function as my brush. Um, so that's the biggest reason, man. It's, it's a tool. My brush is a tool too, but it's more, it's, it only serves one purpose. This, this tool is almost like a Swiss army knife. My, my comb, I can use it a few different ways. Um, clipper over comb. I can create 45 degree angles, but clipper over comb is a major piece of my fade technique, of my strategy, and it doesn't work if I have a brush in my hand. Out of a question. best cleaning product that I use for clippers and tools. Um, I've switched to microband. That's a 24 hour um, disinfectant spray. So what I do is in the morning, I'll come in and wipe my tools down with it to disinfect everything. Um, besides that, I'm a fan of alcohol. I use straight isopropyl alcohol. Um, I don't use it necessarily to clean my blades. Like I don't get deep in my blades with it. I might wipe the top of it, but um, throughout the day to keep things sanitary, to keep things clean, I'm using alcohol. Um, I wash my hands frequently, but 
alcohol is a great way to make sure that things are are disinfected disinfected so i don't get too fancy um currently right now i don't use the uh is that is it what's the name of the blue um liquid meg what's the traditional blue liquid called barbicide no. it's barbicide yeah so i'm not using barbicide i've actually did a little research within state board for the state of georgia it's not even required anymore last time state board came into our shop they told us that we only needed one jar of barbicide for the entire shop so i'm not a fan of submerging my tools within it um like i said alcohol to me is a disinfectant so i'll just use alcohol that's my best cleanser alcohol clean hair out of my clippers then you got to use clipper oil so I'll, I'll oil my clippers and run it through about once to once or twice a week and then I'm constantly using my clipper side spray in between haircuts um, and constantly using alcohol to clean my hands clean my combs soap and water too I submerge all my combs and um in some soap and water and wash them all at the same time and just keep them in a closed container by my station All right, so this technique I'm doing, um, I'm getting a little technical, a little more advanced, but um, Kevin has a drop ball fade and his hair texture is not really dense, not not super dense. So most of my fading, um, I'm using open blade fading. Um, it allows me to give him a smooth transition and because his hair isn't super dense, um, it allows me to give him a smooth transition, but in a compacted space. My fade technique switches and the guards that I use and the, the techniques that I use switches based on texture, texture based, based on density. I said density, we got to combine texture and density together. So that's what I mean when I was talking earlier about different guards is being flexible enough and exploring enough to know that not every technique is going to work, not every guard is going to work. And this is an example of how my comb is a powerful tool because instead of putting on another guard or just going back and putting on my one guard to get up to this section, I can just use my tool, my comb, and do clip over comb. All right, so. Raking through, going with the grain. As I go with the grain, I'm still I'm moving fast, but I have a 45 degree angle as I'm raking through it. I don't want to be flat because I can take off too much hair and reset my fade section. So I'm just raking through, just removing some some bulk in that section of my blend. Knocking out my ball line, I was all the way closed, now I'm halfway. Now I'm back to being open. Notching. Raking, these are all techniques that I use. Notching again. So this, this is helping me avoid having to go back and put on another guard. I'm just notching now. So if overcome, normally you put on a one guard to get something all the way up here. I got my Swiss, Swiss Army knife right here, so I don't have to go all the way back. This fade technique is good and it's useful for me only because I already set my ball line and my weight line. I already know where I'm supposed to be. I know where I can't go. I know my sections because I put my fade lines in first. And I know that my notching technique in this section is pretty much the same as using my one guard close. So now I'm just going through, making sure things are balanced, they look even. Hair cutting and fading. This may sound a little um, backwards, but it's not necessarily about cutting everything even. It's about making sure things look 
all the way even. Especially with a fade with even all over haircut. People have um, different types of textures, different densities, right? So if his hair may be more dense up here than it is in the front. If I just blindly put on a two guard and use that all the way over, use that all the way around. Technically the hair may be the same length, but it doesn't look even. Yeah. Cool. Um, no, no burn is not is not a substitute for holding spray. It's not a substitute for spritz. No burn is a combination. Well, the ingredients is witch hazel and aloe vera. So no burn is a tool is a product that you can use as a pre shave conditioner or as a post haircut astringent. It's not for crispy lines, it's more for comfort. It's more, yeah, I would just say comfort. Now, if you're looking to get crispier lines, that comes down to a couple different things. Um, you need clean skin. You need skin that's not overly dry. Um, you need to make sure your liners are set properly. And you need tension to make sure you're stretching the skin out when you put that line on. Um, another product that you can invest into to give you cleaner lines, you should go to my Instagram page. You go to my Instagram page and scroll down. It may be about 20 posts down, but I do a whole post on crispy lines in my exact routine. Um, of course, don't do that right now, but you should get a product that is actually Meg has it right here because she is a student of the game. So Barbersaw has this product. Um, it's a soothing aloe. It's a thick and rich shaving cream. Though it's technically a shaving cream, it's it's really for me more of a cleanser. It when you use it on the hairline, it does a great job of removing oil. And I think because it's a soothing more uh, a product more suited for sensitive skin, it doesn't drastically remove all the moisture off your skin. So that soothing aloe I think helps out with keeping the hair somewhat moisturized even though it's clean. Get something like that, put it on the hair before you line them up. Use a hot, hot, hot towel to wipe it off, so to wipe it into the skin. Um, you can still use spritz or holding spray. I mean, I still do myself, but the fundamentals is clean skin and moisturized skin. Not overly clean because you don't want it super dry. Not overly moisturized because oily skin won't give you a sharp line either. All right, can we switch to this one then? I grab a hot towel. All right, so I already put his hairline on. Seems like Kev, you washed your hair this morning or last night? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday, okay, cool. Um, I noticed because A, I've been cutting hair for a long time, so I can kind of see based on how the hair feels, how long it's been since they washed it. Um, and I also inform my clients to to go ahead and wash their hair before they come in. So look, Kev, he already took care of that. Are there any clean white towels in the dryer? Can you check for me? So yeah, clean skin, moisturized skin. That'll definitely give you sharp lines. And um, check your clippers too, man. You don't want to. You want to make sure your clippers aren't too sharp, but um, they have to be close to zero gap. Um, and if they're not, then that's when the pencil comes in handy. But I still will use the pencil. I mean, I, I use it sometimes when I do some of my social media posts, my Instagram posts. If I want my picture to pop or my video to pop, of course you want to use a pencil to add some more contrast. Um, but that's, that's only for temporary, right? That's only for cosmetics, just for the gram, just for your client walking out the shop. As soon as he gets home and he washes it out, or he touches his head with the paper towel, <laughs> that pencil is gone. So yeah, the sharpest way is still a razor. You always get your sharpest lines with a razor, so keep working on your razor work, bro. I'll recommend that for sure. So I'm finishing up here, guys. Um, about to wrap up this live. Um, if you have any more questions, and maybe and maybe I didn't get to your question, maybe you get a chance to read your question, 
you can still drop it in the comment section. Um, I may not be able to give you as thorough as a response, but I can definitely go back and see these comments and reply back. Um, and also let me know what type of cut or what type of um, demonstration you would like me to do next time. All right, so we're finishing up here. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up the rest of this on my own. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and log out now. Y'all end this live. Thanks for joining in again. Thanks for waking up early. All my barbers out there, get to it. Make sure you stay focused and uh, focus on service, right? Focus on hearing your clients out and serving what they say their needs are, not what you think is best for them. Cool? All right, y'all. Peace, ideal barber checking out. Okay, appreciate you, brother.